Percy Jackson is such a good example of groomers liking to use people in a vulnerable position mm -hmm. because that's what Luke does with Percy early on and it doesn't work, thankfully. But we see Luke meeting Percy after literally one of the worst traumas he could have gone through. This kid thinks he lost his mom. Yeah. Um, and suddenly, you know, is getting pursued by monsters and finds out he has been his entire life. This kid is vulnerable. And so Luke, a person who has ulterior motives, latches onto him and is like, I'm going to show you around because he's put himself, he's gotten himself to this trusted position where he is the type of person who's considered a camp leader. Mm -hmm. And then he uses that influence he has over Percy to be like, let me hold your hand and teach you about this world. Oh, you're going on a quest. You don't want to take me. That's fine. Let me give you these gifts. Let me give you advice. Um, you know, and so he he's constantly trying to give that in, trying to let Percy know, I'm here for you. I'm here for you. I will be there for you. You want to be you want me on your side. But his motive is to eventually use per Percy for the prophecy. Yep. Yeah. And to be fair, he even uses like Annabeth to be mm -hmm. like, I'm a nice guy because everybody likes and respects Annabeth. And I call her my sister. Um, mm -hmm. He's honestly like worse with that in strangely in the book than he is on the show. Even like in, on, in the book, he like asks Percy many times, like, oh, did you try the shoes on? Do they fit? Mm -hmm. And stuff like that. And Percy just lies to him and is like, yeah, they're great. <laughs> So he, yeah. he thinks like, oh, this person's my friend. I don't want to tell him that I gave his shoes to Grover instead. And he like, when they get to like Las Vegas, he tries to tell him not to trust Annabeth. Mm -hmm. It's just like crazy that that Luke would be like, oh, she's my sister. She's the best. Four days later, don't trust her though. Yeah. Like, come to me with the, your problems instead. Some some things that you definitely want to look out for if you're a teenager are people trying to make themselves invaluable to you. Like, you know, they are the only person that can be that. And that's that's essentially what Luke was trying to do with all of that is I am your guide to being a demigod. I am your guide to finishing this quest. So come to me and me only. <laughs> Yeah, like basically isolation in some way of where they try to get you alone. And even if they have like a reason for it, it's one of those things of if you're not sure, just telling, just mentioning what you're doing with that person to somebody else and then telling them about it is almost like a test that you can do. Because if there's nothing wrong, then there's no reason why they would be upset. Mm -hmm. Because most of the time, nobody gets upset if you have more than one friend <laughs> yeah like we both have other friends and when i mention those people you're not like who are you talking to you're not allowed to speak to people like other people besides no that would never like that, that wouldn't happen and so that's like a good way to look at it is like luke tries to get percy to not trust annabeth when he realizes that percy and annabeth are getting along and becoming friends in a way that he can't control especially if it's somebody that's older and wiser than you they shouldn't be so possessive they shouldn't be so weird about your friendship yeah, and i guess one thing i could say to that too is i feel like sometimes when people talk about isolation they picture somebody who like never leaves the house and never goes anywhere and never does anything but it can just be like mental isolation where mm -hmm. you find yourself not telling people about things or acting in behaviors that are different from how you normally would like like one of the things that one of the million reasons why i think my dad got away with absolutely everything he ever did to me is because i was out there in like the world like he had me doing soccer and softball and every other sport he put me in and there were other things that i did like i did i went to dance class i did like piano lessons like i went to school every day and so like on the outside, it looks like I'm this active person being a part of society and around other kids, but like nobody knew what was going on inside my own head all the time. And so I would be at school around everyone else, surrounded by mandatory reporters every single day, thinking about the stuff that he was doing 
and thinking I can't tell anybody about this though. And I would just think I would go in cycles about that <laughs> like all the time and would never tell them anything. And so even though I was around people all the time, he still kept me isolated from everybody else because I felt like I couldn't trust anybody else that I couldn't tell them what he was doing and that it wouldn't work. Yeah. Um, which, you know, like that's a scary situation when it's a parent because um, I know I tell my son, if, if anybody tells you to keep a secret from me, that is a red flag of a person. Like, do not, never, ever. Flag but ever. when it is your parent, like, oof. Like, because there's just so many horrible things that he does to her. And it makes me so angry to like even think about it. And like, I want them to show that to everyone on the show and like traumatize everybody because I feel like it's worth it. Um, but it is a situation that I feel like sometimes this gets like lost in stuff because you don't realize that Selena is the mole that is like giving Luke information until book five. You know that there is one from the second book on, but you don't know that it's her. Um, but in Sea of Monsters, she's 13 and he is 20. <laughs> And he is making a 13 year old girl tell information about all the people that she loves and telling her that if she doesn't give him this information, he's going to kill more of them. And he knows that um, and he goes to her as her as his mole because he knows that she has a crush on him mm -hmm. and, are, and is more willing to like do what he wants because she has a crush on him. And I'm like, I will stab you in this neck <laughs> that yeah. he like does he she's in seventh grade and he's tw he he's in she's in like seventh grade. And he if he was in school would be a sophomore in college and he's going to her and getting her and making her do all this stuff, making her carry all of this weight that like if she doesn't betray everyone she loves and tells him all the stuff that they're doing then they might all die and like she has to deal with that for all this time and without giving away spoilers for you like it is horrible like it's absolutely horrendous what happens what happens to her it's so sad it it's one of the stories that makes people the most depressed when reading those books what happens to her because it's just so un it's so unfair and but it is like a textbook grooming situation that he does that to her and it's just like, yeah, this is fine. I'm just, he uses the fact that he's good looking mm -hmm. um, to keep, to like keep her quiet and make her be like complicit in this horrible stuff that he's doing when she never, when she would never ever do anything like that and makes yeah. it feel like she has to keep things a secret and all this horrible stuff that she's, that he's forcing her to do. And it's just, yeah, that's like, and I guess that is a good example of how someone can be isolated and do things even when they're surrounded by other people. Mm -hmm. Because she's at camp the whole time that this stuff is going on. Yeah. She's never alone necessarily. She's around everybody else the whole time, but he still is able to get to her and talk to her and force her to do these things that she would never, never ever do um, in a way that is like so unfair that just for his own benefit. Like, and it, I guess the thing with her that is always like stark, I think with grooming is how they like use the information that they have and keep so many things from you. Like mm -hmm. that she has no idea what he's actually doing out there. Like in yeah. Sea of Monsters, he's telling her to tell me what they're doing. And if you do, I won't kill more kids. Meanwhile, he's like, laughing about making Percy watch his two best friends get eaten by some monsters and is like, I'm just going to kill everybody and yeah. is mad because he stopped because Percy is forced to stop him from killing Clarice and then killing the rest of camp. Like, and all the other stuff that happens in the other books, like she doesn't know how horrible he actually is because the persona I'm sure that he shows her is a much nicer, like, persona like he, and ironic because Andrew Alvarez plays Chris Rodriguez he does that to Chris Rodriguez too mm -hmm. he and to um 
so many there's other characters he does it to besides them but those are like the big ones that people remember is that he kind of presents himself as like this nice guy that's just like looking out for everybody else mm -hmm. but they don't see what he's actually doing behind the scenes to people like percy and yeah. percy to his credit doesn't want them to know all that stuff mm -hmm. it is really horrible like do you want to do you really want to come back to camp and be like yeah he tried to he tried to have annabeth and grover get eaten in front of me before like before stabbing me to death <laughs> Like, yeah. no, that's not something you really want to tell these kids that look up, to, look up to this person. Even if you yourself also are a kid, which is part of the isolation stuff that happens, even though he's not being groomed by Luke, it, it still puts him in this position of, I'm the only one who knows the truth. And so I don't want to be the one to ruin everything. 